Welcome to Hartley's Handmade. I'm Caitlin and this is a podcast about knitting, spinning, and all things handmade that go on in my little corner of the world. You can find me on Instagram as Hartley's underscore handmade and on Etsy as Caitlin in Wonderland and I have all of that linked below so you can just click on it. Um, today is February 22nd. It's a Monday. And today on my little almanac calendar that I have that my mama got me, it says that it's George Washington's birthday. So, happy birthday George Washington, I guess. Um, I have some finished objects. I've got crochet today. Um, I've also got some knitting that's been going on and very little spinning. But we have done some stuff outside because it is sunny for the first time. The past two days have been sunny for the first time in like three weeks. It just rained and rained and rained and was gloomy and I used to think that I could live somewhere like I used to love the rain. I mean I love the rain now but not for three weeks straight but I used to think that I could live somewhere like in Washington but I could not actually um I need the sunshine and I got to wear my finished object sweater this weekend um I wore it with a turtleneck because it was still quite cold out um well I won't say yeah it was kind of chilly for me anyways it was um in the low 50s high 40s and the wind was blowing and I don't like the wind blowing because it's cold but Friday was still a little rainy. Saturday, um, we had a fire outside and Linton planted his raspberry bush that he bought. He wants all kinds of fruit bushes, blackberries, raspberries. And we planted it this weekend. I planted some bulbs. Um, my ranunculus are coming up. My tulips are coming up we planted some freesias and now i'm just trying to figure out where to put my dahlias and my peony bush and we need to clean up some of our trees and get them sorry get them um you know just the underbrush taken care of a little bit and we're still going to do that so like i said i need to figure out where i want my dahlias I have a spot that I could put my peony bush, but I'm not, I know that I have bulbs there that were planted before I got here and they come up every year and I don't want to disturb them because they're pretty little purple flowers. Well, they're not really little. They're probably like this big. Um, I don't even know what they are. I've got a lily that comes up and we have a lily farm close to us. Um, this, I've never been to it but I have drove past it and seen that they have these huge lilies and you go and get your cuttings of what you want so I think I'm going to do that this year just to you know support someone else that's trying to make some money off of some stuff and you know also I'm not a huge fan of lilies so it's not something that I think that I'd want like planted around the yard and have to take care of because I probably wouldn't take care of them and then they die and it would just be a waste of money. But, yes, as you can see, I am wearing my finished object. It's my sanguine sweater. I love this neckline. I have knit two other sweaters, the flax cardigan, or not cardigan, the flax pullover and the weekender. And I don't love either one of their necklines because they kind of come out pretty far and I like how this one is up on my neck. It's got some short row shaping so that in the back and she tells you how to do all that. I'm gonna stand up, show you. I, the sleeves are a little long, but whenever I, whoop, I'll sit back down. When I lift my arms up, they're just right. So, and I thought that this, like I said last time, I like stuff that's like, up in my armpits but it's not terrible once I wore it um I just it's made out of all red heart yarn so 
that I've I've had a stash. This is my like I have my acrylic yarns and stuff in here. And if you looked on my Instagram over the weekend, I posted where most of my other, you know, hand dyed fibers and hand dyed yarns are on another um, dresser that I got from a friend of my dad's who recently passed away. Um, Scott, he lived um, pretty close to us and then he moved to, and he worked with my dad and he moved to Wyoming. And I wanted to go there, but um, I didn't get a chance to. And yeah, he found out earlier last year that he had, um, I don't know if it was colon cancer, but he had cancer of some type in his body. And the doctors told him that he had one to two years with no treatment and he decided, I don't know if he decided not to do treatment, but it took him pretty fast, faster than what the doctors thought it would. And my dad was one of the like five people that he gave his brother the number two to call and let him know. So that's kind of a little special thing for me that I got that from him. I've got some other furniture from him because when he moved, he just left everything. Well, I won't say everything, but he left a lot here and um, in Georgia and moved to Wyoming. And he was happy out there. He had lots of acreage. And yeah, it's really sad. It's a sad thing. But right after he passed, our first, like within days, our first um, bull was born. And he, his name is Scotty. And so now, I told Chris the other day, I was like, Daddy's not gonna, we're not gonna butcher that one. Like, we just can't. And it's funny because this weekend, he was like, we can go do something special for Scotty. Maybe we'll keep him and breed him. And I was like, yeah. Knew he wasn't going anywhere. But, yeah, that was kind of a sad note to start off on. But I'm very happy that I have that. And he was a really, really, really cool guy and a really good friend of my dad. So, yes, as I said, I don't know if I said the name of this. This is a sanguine sweater. I actually looked it up and saw how to pronounce it. And yeah, I should do that more often. Also in pronunciation, um, Last week, I totally butchered how to say the girl that did my dreads, Lindsay. She is She Leaf on Instagram. And I'll tag her below as well. Um, she did a great job and she's been there for me. Like, I'll send her pictures or if I have questions, she's awesome. And she said that there's a story behind um, the leaf part and... I'm going to look that up so that I know what it is. Okay, my other finished object is the March hat from the Year of Hats from Kelborn Woolens by Megan. Hang on, because that it got a little messed up whenever it was printed. Printing Megan Babin. I did not look up that pronunciation but it's okay this is the hat they are 12 free patterns that you can get either on Ravelry or on their website I believe you can also get um, yeah at kelbornwoolens.com you can get well that's the pattern so you don't really care Anyways, it's the March hat. I've been looking at this one and I've wanted to knit it and wanted to knit it and just never done it. So I grabbed some hand spun that I'd actually spun from some roll logs from Felview Fibers in the, oh, 
the name of it's on the inside of the ball. So I don't even know. It's deadly something. Thought I had it together. It's okay. So I had spun that yarn specifically to either knit the March hat or another Kobuk hat by Caitlin Hunter. And this is by More Thunder. I didn't say that. Um, but I learned a lot on this hat. A, I learned how to do a tubular cast on. I had never done a provisional cast on or a tubular cast on or anything of the such sort. I learned how to pull out, like go back, pick up my stitches and find out where my beginning of round was because I did not know where my beginning of round was, but I figured it out and I knit this beautiful hat. It is in the seersucker, this is the seersucker stitch. So it's some knits and pearls and it makes this little puffiness. Um, I keep thinking that I'm gonna, that the name of this is gonna pop into my head, but it's just not. I got the pom pom from uh, Paradise Fibers. I was in their like little monthly subscription box for a little while, but then I got this, but I, I'm not in it now, not because I don't want to be because that was really awesome to get fibers every month. Um, it's just not something that we can afford at the moment. So, yes. And I just tied it in with some yarn. Um, so if I want to take it off, I can. But I'll put it on. I gotta take my hair down to put it on. Um, I, when I first knit it, it's got really quick decreases. So when I first knit it, it's warm in here. It's warm in the house with all these knits on. Um, when I first knit it, I started, I did per pattern and then put it on. And it was too short by about like this much. I like my ears covered up, so I pulled back and figured it all out and knit one more pattern repeat, then decrease, because it's got a really quick decrease. Like decreasing is like six rounds maybe. And um, that's why it bunches up at the top, but I really love this hat. And I've been watching Laura. Why did I just stutter on that? Yeah, Laura from the corner of Knit and Tea. Um, she has been knitting some hats and I want one of hers. I know they're all for charity, but one of them is so pretty. And if I could get my hands on that yarn, I would knit my own. So, yes. This is now really only my second hat that I have. I have more hats, but they were when I'm first started knitting and they're not the prettiest I would say and they don't fit right and the gauge is wrong and all that stuff so this is really like only my second hat and I've been knitting for so long I knit for other people a lot that's why this year I want to knit more for myself is because I do knit for a lot of people other people or make things for people and you know I love pom-poms and I, I did not want to be on the pom-pom train. I didn't. I can be honest and say that I was like, pom-poms are so ridiculous. Like why, why do people use pom-poms all the time? And I didn't want to be on the pom-pom train, but I think I'm on it. Choo choo. That was dumb. I should not have done that. Please forgive me. Awesome hat. And those are my only two finished objects. So since we're talking about knitting, I'll continue with knitting. Um, all right, I'm back. I don't know why my phone keeps messing up. I really just need to use 
I think it's because I had some stuff running in the background and Linton was trying to call me on his Echo. So, um, I really just need to use a, uh, my camera or something. I have a camera. It's just like from 2010, so I don't even know if it would like work well, but anyways, what I was saying is I've been working on my Casablanca socks three ply two ways. I finished the other ones except for the heels, the two plies last week, and I picked these up yesterday and started working on them a little bit. I only worked on one sock. I didn't get much done. I was watching um, Behind Her Eyes on Netflix. And let me tell you, that show is crazy. It's a limited series. So when it was done, it was done. But at first I couldn't figure out what was going on. And then every time I thought I knew what was going on, I did not know what was going on up until the very, very end. Um, like literally the last two minutes, I was like, oh, are you kidding me right now? So yeah, so I've been watching. It's not all I've been watching. I've been watching some catfish, which is now virtual because of the pandemic and all that so I've been watching that a little bit and I watched something else I think oh, I watched Gone Girl that was a crazy one too that I did not figure I kind of figured it out but I need to watch the last like five or ten minutes because I was falling asleep and so I don't think I got the whole gist of it quite down at the very, very end. But anyways, okay, Casablanca socks. Spun this yarn from Created by LCB. This is the uh, chain pod. And this is the traditional three ply. So I made two socks at a time from two balls of yarn. It can get pretty tangly and messy, but it is all right. This is, I did not work on this sock at all. So you've seen this one already. This is the Lavender Fields colorway, um, the tweed sock from Knit Picks, and this is how much I was on the last time I showed this, but I did work on the other one. Like I said, just a little bit. Um, I'm marking it every five stripe repeats. So um, there's the uh, chain plaid and then the traditional three ply. So this is five repeats and this is where I was last time I saw y'all. And it was very kind of muted stripes, and now it's getting more stripey, which is exciting. I'm knitting these on 2.25 millimeter needles, 60 stitches. These are my Chow Goo 9 inch circulars, and I really like these. They're really nice. And I feel like I knit a little bit faster on these because I don't have to like stop and change a needle at all. So if your hands can, I have smaller hands. So if your hands can fit a nine inch circular and you like it, I recommend doing that because they do go way faster. Like I only worked on these from here about an hour last night, maybe, maybe two. I don't know, I stopped so much in between to have to do stuff with the kids that I can't really keep up with time. When people ask me like, how long did it take you to make that? I'm like, two months. But really it wasn't two months. <laughs> I just don't time it. I've thought about sitting down and time in a pair of socks. But that's just too much work that I'm not really up for doing so yes that is all my knitting 
Now I've got some crochet that I've been working on. For Christmas, my mother bought me 12 balls of Bread Heart Unforgettable Single Ply Yarn um, in the Sunrise colorway. So, ooh, upside down. So this is it. And this is the colorway. It's got um, pinks and oranges and blues and grays and more magentas and just the way that they all go through with each other. It There's a lot more colors than it looks like. Um, this recommends a six millimeter needle, but I used a five millimeter needle at first to do this blanket and I, it was too big for me. So I went back down to my regular, when I crochet, I normally use for blankets a four millimeter needle because I just like the way that looks best. Don't want to drop my needle. I've been using these Clover size G four millimeter. Um, I've got several different kinds and I just picked this one up for no specific reason. And my plan is to knit, this is going to be a corner to corner blanket. This is one whole ball, 100 grams. And since I have 12, I'm going to knit six or crochet six and then crochet six back down the other way. And hopefully it will be a big enough blanket for my bed. And then I'll go around it with a solid color. I'm not sure what, but this is it. It's pretty big already. Um, you can see how there are very many different colors, like kind of, it starts off with the orange here and then like this, it's got some blue in it kind of, and looks more brown and it's just really pretty. I really like it. So that's my sunset. I'm not rushing through this blanket. Um, I think right now my goal is to crochet through one ball a week, which will put me at 12 weeks, but we'll see how that goes. And I'm not going to like show it every time if there's not much progress. I put a little light bulb stitch marker to be able to like see how much it's grown each time. So there's that with that crochet one. And then I had started this crochet blanket. I have seven balls of this yarn and I've got a, um, a gift card to Michael's for my birthday year before last. And I bought this yarn for, to make a blanket for Lilith. And well, okay, I thought about making a blanket for Lilith and then I was like, well, a chunky sweater would be awesome. And then I realized how heavy it was. And I was like, I don't know if I wanna wear that heavy of a sweater. So then I was like, well, maybe I could just buy some more and make a blanket for my bed. But then that would be a really hot blanket and I am not, I get really hot at night. So I'm never like, needing that extra warmth maybe whenever we don't when the kids are a little bit older and we don't like run the ac or the heater as much i might need it but yes this is woolies thick thick hmm. woolies thick and quick from lion brand yarns um it calls for this is 170 grams it's a six ounce it's acrylic 77% acrylic, 20% wool, three other fiber, because it's Tweety. So, and again, it's upside down, because I was reading it. It's in the colorway Raisins, or Raisin. Um, I really like this color. And my plan is to get the off-white color of this. And whenever I finish the blanket, which I ultimately decided to make Lilith a blanket, I'm going to do like a scalloped edge border on it. So 
yeah it's really squishy and it works up really quick so i don't know how big this blanket's going to be i am using a 10 millimeter needle it's also a clover um this hurts my hands not the needle but knit uh why do i keep saying knitting crocheting with this really hurts my hands and i don't appreciate it <laughs> so i'm also going to try to do one ball a week which i'm already two balls in because i had already started it so this is two balls of yarn and what i'll do with this one is I will continue to grow it outwards for one more ball. And then the fourth ball, I'm going to, so with corner to corner blankets, you can make um, rectangles and you can also make squares. Um, you can also do some really cool stuff and make pictures. And I tried that and it just, it didn't work with my brain like I have a pattern and I think I started off way too big it was this huge Elmo blanket that said Elmo loves you for Linton and I just I don't think it I think it was too big to start off with um but yeah so this is gonna be a little rectangle blanket for her with a scalloped edge border and like I said I'm gonna do that for a week, one ball a week. I'm gonna try to do with that one. So it's gonna, it would take me five more weeks plus the border. So yeah, I love this. It is so squishy and I'm hoping like it'll fit. She can't have it in the crib with her, but whenever she gets older, I'm hoping that it'll be a nice blanket to cover her up with. I love corner to corner blankets because they're kind of just really mindless and for me they're mindless anyways. I know how to start them. I know how to finish them. Um, I don't need a pattern. I like granny square blankets as well but they're not as, you know, they're a little more holy so and I didn't say what this one was. Let me see. Machine washable. How am I missing this? I'm totally missing what, oh, it's 100% acrylic. This one is. And I don't know if I said this, but this sweater, I didn't block. I, after I washed it, Okay, so when I finished it, I went through and like wove in all my ends, clipped them and all that good stuff. Um, threw it in the washer with a load of clothes, threw it in the dryer, and it came out just perfect. And that's because it's acrylic yarn. It has no wool in it. So. Alrighty. For spinning. Like I said, I haven't been spinning much. I am still working on this Banshee Fiber Arts purple and white yarn, purple and pink yarn, I don't know why I said white, and white, or off-white um, fiber. I haven't been spending much just because I have been really into finishing this sweater and crocheting blankets, because crochet is like one of those mindless things for me, like I said, that I don't have to, you know, count rows. Even on my socks, I have to be like, okay, one, two, three rows. Okay, now switch. And the balls get all tangled up. So it's a little aggravating. Last night, I took some of my yarn scraps and made some roll logs with my yarn scraps. Um, I got the gray and the white yarn from Knitty and Color on Etsy. I got uh, just like a grab bag of stuff and I got the colored ones and I got the uncolored ones. So 
the uncolored still color um the undyed pack as well so here's well there's three here's the white side and then the gray side and my idea for this is to spin a single ply it with a thread and I want to knit a shawl with it I've been watching Spin Jones, which I have some of her fibers. Um, she's been core spinning. And I just think that that is something that's it's beautiful. Like a whole core spun shawl to me would be awesome. And maybe an art yarn shawl. So maybe not like the artiest of art yarns with all the like bobbles in it and everything like that and super chunky. Um, but just to spin and not have like that perfection in mind of, okay, I want a fingering weight yarn and I'm going to do my best to make sure, which I never test my yarns. Um, There's my little lizard. He hangs out on the door, but right now he's on the back porch. Um, anywho, uh, I never like pre-spin my yarns and make sure that they're the right weight and all that good stuff. I'm not very technical about it. So I'd like to be even more untechnical and spin with my scraps that I know where they came from, like from this sweater and from, you know, Lilith's coming home outfit. I've got some yarn in there for that. Um, Chris's hat, some yarn that I spun totally the wrong way and just cut it up and put it in there. Um, I like knowing, being able to look at it and see and be like, oh, well, I knit this with that and knit this with that. And I've seen a lot of people like moon and yarn um, from the Woolies podcast, she sends hers out and somebody was spinning hers for her, her yarn scraps. And I just think it's, it's awesome. But I have always thought that art yarns are for more for weaving and weaving is not my thing. I just, it's not something that grabs my attention. Like other people do it and it's awesome. And I'd love to buy some other wall art and weavings from other people but it's not something that you know I'm going to do so yeah that is everything that I have um as far as fiber content I did want to give a little like life update I guess like I said earlier Linton planted his first raspberry bush he picked it out whenever I went and got my bulbs. Um, and he's so excited for it. He has this big dream of every time we go in the store, he wants, he doesn't want the bulbs. He wants the fruit bushes. So I think if we, next time we go, we'll get like a blackberry bush or something like that for him. We can make some, hopefully make some preserves this year. And, yeah, see where that goes. Yesterday, my dad called me and told me to put on a sweater and be outside. He was coming to get just me. And I hopped in the buggy with him and we rode back across the road to his place. And by literally probably 30, 45 seconds, I missed a calf being born. He said he pulled up out there and she was standing up and the bag was hanging out and he ran up to the house to come get me, um, well, to Google something first. He said he was looking up if uh, cows give birth standing up or sitting down because this is our first time having, like, this is daddy's first time having his own cows. There were cows up here when I was younger. But um, my Uncle George really did that. So, and he found out that they do both. And um, once he was okay with that, he came and got me 
and we watched for a little bit. I got to watch the baby. I don't, we don't know if it's a boy or a girl. We got to watch the baby get to its feet, which was so awesome and kind of stressful. It took about 10 minutes for the poor little thing to get to its feet and its mama just walked off. I was like, what are you doing? You're supposed to be cleaning that up, but she just walked off and some of the other mamas, Annie, which she seems to be like the sweetest, I think. Um, we have Angus Holstein crosses and so she's got like a patchy face. She already had a baby. His name's Picanye. Told you all about him. Um, so she went and checked him out or checked it out. And at first there was, it was like trying to find milk, I guess, from a heifer, which you're not going to get milk from her. Um, but there were three little heifers like looking at it and helping it up and all that good stuff. And all the mom just walked off and I don't know what that was all about. Maybe it's because we were out there. I don't really know. But once the mom walked off and he was up, it was up on its feet, we walked out there. We didn't get too close. We got close enough, but, um, I got to see where she actually like had the baby, like the afterbirth and everything was, well, maybe not the afterbirth, but it was like the amniotic fluid and all that good stuff was on the ground. And it was just so cool to me to see like how the group of cows, like the mama walks off, but these other mamas came up and checked on it and the heifers came up and checked on it. And so if it doesn't get milk from its mama, it will get milk from somewhere. Because daddy says there's a bull that's actually a little bit older. Like he was weaned whenever we got him and he's been nursing on one of the mama cows, which is a little booby baby. It's funny though to see like a big bigger cow and then a calf like both nursing um but yeah that's what we've had going on we've had no more births that i know of with goats and they're doing fine they've kind of leveled out um i think maybe next year we should just and i haven't talked to my dad about this but i think maybe next year we should just um uh, plan better for um, getting the does pregnant and maybe getting them pregnant to where they're birthing in the spring and not in the winter. Maybe that was our problem. Uh, I don't really know what's been going on with that, but like I said, everything has seemed to level out. I don't know if we have any more pregnant does right now. I need to ask and see what's going on. Um, yeah, I've still been doing my little seed starting thing in my bedroom and in the other room over there what's that called little dining room area i have a window that i have them all in and we planted bulbs and i'm just waiting for everything to warm up my garlic is coming up and just waiting for everything to be able to make the asparagus bed and i'm so excited to start growing stuff um, but yeah, I, I don't have any big plans or goals for this week. We were supposed to be in Indiana today, but that got pushed back. So we're not seeing bukus of snow like I had thought that I would be. I didn't think I would be podcasting this week, but here we are. Um... And I'm kind of appreciative of it because it's warm out here and sunshiny. And it was not going to be sunshiny in Indiana. It was going to be gloomy again. And I was really over the gloomy glumness of cloudy, no sunshine. I need my sunshine. So yeah, I hope everyone stays safe. And I mean, I always say stay safe. I always say stay safe. But not just in this time, but in any time, be aware of like your surroundings. You should always be washing your hands, not just in flu season or COVID season or whatever. Um, yeah, 
have fun, be happy, do what makes you happy, and I will see you next week. Bye.